Good morning and welcome to the Assess Ireland International Rally of the Lakes here in the beautiful surroundings of Killarney, County Kerry. We're here at Rally Headquarters at the Glen Eagle Hotel where it's all happening this weekend. It's the fourth round of the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship and it sees the drivers, cars and crews head to the Kingdom for this, the 42nd running of the Assess Ireland Killarney International Rally of the Lakes. Assess, the new sponsor of the event and the Killarney and District Motor Club, we're delighted to have signed a new multi-year deal with Assess. The rally returns to the Barra Peninsula on the Saturday for the first time since 2019 and the route will include the favourites like Cod's Head, Art Groom and the Healy Pass. Sunday's route also features some new roads and after two runs over Miles Gap at Ballock Beamer, the rally heads to East Kerry. The sting in the tail includes two runs over the Gorton Gatton stage and at Knockroar East, the stage that's not been used for rallying since the 1983 Circuit of Ireland, the last time the famed five-day event had visited Kerry. These world-class iconic stages have attracted a huge entry and it promises to be a challenging weekend for crews and their machinery. Let the battles begin. Callum Devine, last year's winner in Killarney, is the top seed in his Volkswagen Polo 5. is very much in the championship hunt after taking victory in the Circuit of Ireland. He led from the opening stage and overall had a 10.2 second win over championship leader Josh Moffat last time out. After Devine's win on the circuit, it puts last year's Killarney winner back in the Irish Tarmac Championship hunt. And the series now has three different winners after the opening three rounds. Kevin Eaves is the leading modified contender. He's back to defend his crown in his Toyota Corolla Twin Cam with the likes of Gary Kiernan and Conor Murphy all in escorts snapping at the Donegal driver's heels. However, this year's event was to be something of a sombre affair after the recent passing of Craig Breen, who died in testing for Croatia Rally and who won the event in the Kingdom in 2019 on his way to winning the Tarmac title and due to the fact that he also won the Killarney Historic Rally in the past. The number 42 was retired by the organisers as a mark of respect to the late Breen and fans turned out in their thousands to honour the former World Rally driver. I've said it all the time, if, I, if the opportunity arises, I will do every single rally I can back home. This is where the best rally and the best people is, so we'll yeah. see. So it is, and the best tea, obviously. Obviously, I'm about to go and have one right now. <laughs> you enjoy that cup of tea, Mr. Brink, good luck. They are the finest loop of stages that I've ever driven in my life. Uh, absolutely, I know I always say that's the best one, that's the best, but they were the best too. You're one of the most lucky people in the world to get to drive in the World Rally Championship. Just experience it all. You have to have fun. Life is very short. The now traditional ceremonial start took place on Main Street on the Friday night where Paul Nagel led the tributes to his late friend and colleague. For me and all the people out there, I would say thank you to all the support and all the messages the Breen family have gotten, the support, the Irish motorsport, the world of motorsport and everything, things that can be done. We're, we're a small family, but with a big heart. 
But life, as we know, goes on. And while the occasion was a sad one, there was a celebration of Craig with music provided by one of the competitors, with John Dolo from Donegal on fiddle on the start round. Callum Devine, last year's winner in Killarney, is the top seed in his polo. He's very much in contention for the championship after taking victory on the recent circuit of Ireland. Callum, it must be an honour to be number one going up Miles Gap tomorrow morning. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Obviously, such a prestigious event to be number one on the door. It's uh, yeah, great honour, but there's a couple of guys here now who will, will be giving us a good rattle for it. So, yeah, we have to be, uh, we have to be sharp in the morning. Well, there's bound to be in contention over the weekend, but include Dubliner Robert Barable in the Citrum, who's making a return to rallying after a number of years absence from the sport. Over the previous years, so we've had a couple of good results, so hopefully we're trying to bring that same pace and uh, look towards this weekend. It was a long run down to Galarney for Johnny Greer from County Down, who not only competes in the international section, but on the historic event as well in December. He loves the event, and who can blame him? They're some of the best stages in the country, I think. And I really enjoyed every time I come down here. Feel very welcome and always enjoy the stages and enjoy the rally. So, yeah, it's a long way from it's a long way from home, but it's worth it. Galway International Rally winner Welshman Marion Evans in the Hyundai finished third on the circuit, and it's all to play for at the top of the standings as the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship reaches the midway point. Others competing in an all-star lineup include the McHale brothers, Gareth and Aaron, both in VW polos, and the Kerryman Rob Duggan in another polo, who's seated at number seven. He could well be in the mix with his local knowledge. You've had a dream from a young age to go up Miles Gap in one of these machinery tomorrow. You must be looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. I've yeah, dreamed about it for a long time and uh, I'm very lucky to get up there in the escort a, a good few times. So yeah, just looking forward to getting into it and uh, having a crack tomorrow morning. Wrapped on and dusted, the car is headed for overnight Park Ferme, where he headed for the opening eight stages of this year's event, which started on the iconic Miles Gap and also had stages at the Healy Pass, Cod's Head, Art Groom, and the final run of day one over Kilmacalog as we caught up with the new sponsor, Connor DC of Assess Ireland. Connor, we're here on Mall's Gap. You must be delighted to be the main title sponsor of this event. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Uh, we got involved only in recent weeks, but it's been fantastic so far. It's ideal for um, our business. There's people either, you know, driving cars or uh, we've certified machinery. So there's everyone here today, you know, is someone that we would like to be able to provide our business services to, to in the future. It's fantastic, it really is. But there's a fantastic buzz building all day, and also we're really looking forward to, to spectating here with the rest of the crew. And so to the action and updates from stages one to five. The first we see is the VW Polo of Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan. Devine, however, suffered a puncture on stage one. Miles Gap is dropping to fourth, 13.9 seconds off the lead. Line crest in touch, three left and uh, line a slide right over a crest. Puncher there in the last couple of corners, probably went to be a bit of a brave option at higher, but yeah, look, didn't last too much time, hopefully, so. I don't know what the boys are doing, but ah, look, long rally. Devine's in good form. He led from the opening stage of the Circuit of Ireland where he went on to win from Championship leader Josh Moffat. After his win, it puts the Killarney winner back in the Irish Tarmac Championship hunt. Six left over flat crest, go and jump. Six left through the dip into fast four left over crest into short three right. Go. And the surprise, or is it? Rob Duggan, the Malls Gap specialist, leads in his R5, an astonishing 9.8 seconds quicker than anybody else. Duggan is a former motorsport and a young rally driver of the year recipient. He's also competed internationally. The carry man has also plenty of local knowledge, having won his class on the historic Rally of the Lakes. However, after his opening stage win, he'd eventually drop into second, 5.6 seconds off the lead after five stages from the hard, charging, divine recovering from the puncture. Four left, tightens to two right plus. And 
Fast four left plus, tightens to three left plus at the gate. 80. Six left into sudden three right, minus. And four left, tightens at the trees. 60. Three left plus at the gate. Sadly, this will be the only time we'd see the Welshman, Marion Evans. Third of the gap, 11.7 seconds off Duggan and still third after stage two. Healy pass, Evans rolled out on stage three, Cod's head, ending his event in the polo and missing out on valuable championship points. Dubliner Rob Barrable in the Citroen was making a return to rallying after a number of years absent from the sport, but he showed he had lost none of his battling skills. Barrable knows a good start is essential if he's not to be playing catch up once again. And at the end of stage five, his dark destroyer Citroen C3 Rally 2 was well in the mix, third overall and just 8.9 seconds off Divine's lead. Six right, tightens over crest, into six left, 80. Six right into four left plus 40. Keep right at three left. Five right opens. 140. It was a surprisingly slow start for defending Irish Tarmac Rally champion Josh Moffat in the Hyundai I 20. He was only fifth after stage one, 19 seconds off the lead. And he remained fifth after the first run over Healy Pass. He moved into fourth after Evans' demise on stage three. And the second run over Healy Pass, stage five, he stayed fourth, a staggering 50 seconds off the lead. A time totally unexpected as the former champion had issues on special stage four. Others bound to be contention over the weekend would include Sam Moffat in the Hyundai, but he found too that the car didn't suit the opening five stages. The former Killarney winner was only sixth after stage one, and by the end of stage five was fifth, 5.1 seconds off his brother Josh. There was work to be done for the Moffat siblings. Having made the long trip down from County Down, Johnny Greer's rally came to an abrupt halt when he crashed out just past the gap at the top of stage one. Gareth McHale is a former Irish Tarmac Rally champion. He and brother Aaron are now back in the sport. Gareth was in contention before issues on stage four. Dropped him way down the order. In the VW Polo, the veteran Brian Murphy alongside him, who used to co-drive for his dad, Austin. The wet conditions continue to take their toll as Aaron McHale, with a terrible start, and is surprisingly outside the top 20, crashed his polo on special stage four. Monaghan's Brendan Comiskey was gradually recovering from the slow start, but he too went down on stage four. A long way to come for such a short run. That's rallying. And just outside the top 10 after five, the Ford Fiesta Rally 2 of Keith Vines and JJ Kremen. Well, Keith's dad and Healy Pass sponsor was just happy to get to second service. Ken, you have a long association with this event. Tell us about it. Yeah, I've been doing these stages down here since 1977. My current navigator was the clerk of the course in, the, in those days. It's the same car here that I used in 1978. Not going as quick as I'd like to be going these days, but at the end of the day, they bring back amazing memories, and I just love it every time. Now to the modifiers and leading in an incredible sixth on the overall standings, Kevin Eves and Chris Melly in the Toyota Corolla. Their charge to the front of Modifieds put them in an impressive place in the top ten. For one last, 40. Five right, shiny breaking turn, hair the left. 60. Right that right. Two right and five left. And a five right and caution line, four left height into three left minus 40. Jason Black and Carl Egan were the nearest challengers in the two wheel drive category, and they too were an impressive ninth place in the overall standings. Jason, a great battle there in the modified. 
Yeah, I'm um, definitely a good cut through um, Cod's head and getting close to Kevin, like, which is good. Um, unfortunately, not to get our groom, just got cut short, and then we lost a bit of time in um, Healy Pass. There have a few issues, so hopefully get it sorted here in service and we're good to go again. Third in modifieds, Connor Murphy and Sean Collins in the Ford Escort. In fourth place in the class, Chris Armstrong and Darren Curran in another Ford Escort. Level on time with Armstrong and in fifth place, Gary Kiernan and John McGrath in their Ford Escort. But still work to be done for Kiernan. So the overall top five after five stages. Leading is Callum Devine, second Rob Duggan ahead of Rob Barrable, Josh Moffat and Sam Moffat. Conditions are proving to be challenging here at the Assess Ireland International Rally of the Lakes, but it's early stages in this iconic event. We will be back with more action after the break. You're welcome back to part two of this year's Killarney International Rally of the Lakes. And now on to Cod's Head, our groom and Kilmacalogue. Divine and Donald Sullivan completed day one with a 7.5 second advantage over Rob Barrable and Gordon Noble. The defending Rally of the Lakes champion will be happy with his overnight lead. But he knows that Barrable and Duggan are still big threats. But a brace of wins on Healy Pass and Cod's Head extended Devine's lead over Duggan to 21.3 seconds. Six left, kink over jump, 100 going up. Slowing, two left minus continues, keep and tough, two right going down. And a short two left, keep over crest. Two right over crest, be neat, 40. Tied to two left over crest, keep, don't, into three right. Callum, you're smiling from ear to ear. What a day you've had. Yeah, it's not been a bad day in the end up. So, yeah, it's been challenging conditions all around. It's been wet, dry, sloppy, everything. So, yeah, we're just glad to get the end of it now. So, uh, yeah, another big day tomorrow, so. Barable responded with his own fastest time through Saturday's final two stages. The Dubliner was in fine form all day as he bids to haul in Devine's lead on Sunday's remaining eight stages. To crest 60, five right into crest light and a four right into crest lippy three left into crest two right, 40, shiny two left, 80, six right, 60, crest two left. Today is very demanding on man machinery and concentration levels. I'm not saying that tomorrow is any different, but the characteristics of them Saturday stages puts an awful lot of emphasis on you. So, but uh, no, we're happy. Uh, happy enough now. It's just going to keep the pace going tomorrow now. With Barable now on it, Duggan was now in third place. 21.3 seconds off the lead, but with two more runs of Miles Gap on day two, Duggan will certainly fancy his chances of at least a top three place. It's not been a good day for the defending champion Josh Moffat. Slow start in wet conditions and problems on stage four meant his Hyundai i20 was now almost a minute down in Divine. While he was eyeing hopefully a top three spot, Josh was now in fourth but looking over his shoulder as well. As Sam Moffat edged closer to his brother's fourth place position over Saturday's final loop. And Monaghan's Hyundai drivers are now separated by only 2.4 seconds ahead of Sunday's action. Former champion Declan Boyle had a horrible start. He was only 18th after Miles Gap and 15 over Healy Pass. And with one day to go, he'll be happy enough with 7th overall and 6th overnight in the main field. The VW Polo driver was, however, almost four and a half minutes off the lead. One left to a crest and left to a crest again. And crest they made 83 right. Cut and carry. 100. One left to a crest, absolute 100. 
And O'Brien and John Butler, seeded 11, was now 8th after the opening day in his R5 Polo. It was just a mere three-tenths of a second between him and Boyle, heading into day two. Local man Alan Ring and his core co-driver Adrian Deasy were also getting into the groove after a slow start. Their polo was up to 15th overnight, overtaken by Moynihan on the last stage of the day, but now just seven-tenths of a second to drift. Joe McGonigal and Kieran Gini from Donegal lay in eighth place after the second service, but the rally ended when the Ford Fiesta went out on special stage seven. Just outside the top ten at second service, Keith Lyons and JJ Kremen dropped down the leaderboard when their Fiesta punctured on special stage seven. Comes around in over the crest. 50, late, right three plus, ah, and to left four minus opens, one fifty out which forced the pair to first change the offending wheel mid-stage before resuming in their Ford Fiesta. Casey J. Coleman and Adam Coffey were leading the new RC4 category overnight in their Ford Fiesta. Casey J. Coleman, you're leading the way in the RC4 category. Yeah, we're having a good run. Um, it was tricky enough, obviously, with the weather, and uh, we thought we had a puncture there for a while, so we lost a bit of time, but uh, serious rally show, unbelievable stages, and we're really enjoying it, yeah. Let's move on to the modifieds and Kevin Eves and Chris Betty's Toyota Corolla speed has been a sight to behold on the day one mountain passes and road curves. Their charge to the front of modifieds put them in a very impressive sixth place overall overnight, over four minutes off Divine, but leading the modifieds by some 30 seconds. Easy, flat press mid 100, right on flat press 100. Six right, 150. Six left on the press, hook 80, tight, six left to press, dip 60, the four left. The four left up here now. Oh, and three right plus, don't cut, 130. Jason Black and Carl Egan were their nearest challengers in two-wheel drive. They too were also in the top 10, ninth overall in their rear wheel drive starlet. Left over crest 60, jump, two left over dip, and three left over crest, and short, four right, 60. Left on flat crest, 60, fast, three right at the mid over flat crest, 80, C, five right, don't cut. Outside of those, Gary Kiernan and John McGrath from County Cavan and County Wexford respectively were third in the Ford Escort, and 10th overall. Fourteen point eight seconds separated Chris Armstrong and Darren Curran from County Cavan in their Ford Escort from Kiernan, eleventh overall. Now Chris, day one of the Assess Ireland Rally of the Leagues done. What do you make of it? Hey, it was a great day now, to be honest. We we're happy to be up there on the pace. We had a close one there on stage seven. We caught a bank and filled the front wheel with dirt and we thought we'd a puncture. So we backed off a little bit, but we're there thereabouts, we're happy enough. And completing the top five in modifieds, Eddie Doherty and Tom Murphy in 12th overall, some 24 seconds off Armstrong. One modified driver of note is the Killarney and District Motor Club chairman, Tommy Randalls. I may be the first chairman to, have, <laughs> to be rallying. 83, 1983, I did the first rally, so that's a good bit to go. So, yeah, we're looking forward to a great rally, and I take this opportunity to thank everybody involved because there's a huge, huge effort going to organising rallies. Rallies today, you know, with bales and uh, safety plans and everything, there's massive, massive work and massive costs. So, fair play to everyone that's done it, and Dermot Healy and his massive team. So, I'd like to thank everyone. Another local clubman and Killarney veteran is Charlie Hickey, who's got daughter Charlie navigating family have also inaugurated the Johnny Hickey Cup for the top two-wheel drive modified navigator in honour of the late, great Killarney Clubman. A special prize put up by your family this weekend. Tell us about it. That's right, yeah. Um, I suppose Johnny being a modified navigator all his life, so we have a beautiful uh, new cup to go to the overall two-wheel drive modified navigator, which we think would be appropriate. I think Johnny would like that. Here's another father-daughter crew, Charlie's brother John, who has his own daughter Michelle on the notes in their Ford Subaru Hybrid. 
Here's yet another father and daughter crew, John and Ruby O'Reardon from County Cork, competing in a Ford Escort. Now, Ruby, it's your first rally and you're co-driving for your dad. Yeah, I am. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it's been a great experience. And there's great history in your family. I think your mom started off and now it's yourself inside in the co-driving seat. Yeah, it was my dad and my mom used to do it together and it's his first rally in 18 years. So I'm after taking mom's place now inside in the passenger seat. And how are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's even better than I thought it would be, to be honest. I think you've got the bug. Yeah, I think I have. Amy Burke is from Australia and Emil McNamara from Kilkenny. They were an all ladies crew be the car number 163 and enjoying the whole thing. She made some run up Miles Gap there, so it was class and it, it, just a feeling. And like even the two of us were laughing coming out over the line. Like you have to have the crack. If you don't have the crack, there's no point. Like if you're not smiling coming off the stage or something wrong. And what was your favourite part of it? A Miles Gap definitely as well. It was absolutely brilliant, I would have to say. It was just, we came off the stage and we were absolutely buzzing and laughing and it was just great now. We caught a car, so we were delighted. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of day one in the historics, it was an English man who led two Welsh drivers. Duncan Williams had a 7.8 seconds lead from Will Onions in his Ford Escort. And in third place, Gareth Bevan, who was a mere 11 seconds off the leader, Duncan Williams, after eight stages. Still plenty to play for in historics. But the overall top five after special stage eight. It's Callum Devine who leads. In second place, Rob Barrable, ahead of Rob Duggan, Josh Moffat and Sam Moffat in their own private battle. So as they packed up from Castletown Bear, heading back to Killarney for day two, join us after the break for the final day's action and the final stages on this year's Killarney International Rally of the Lakes. Welcome back to the International Rally of the Lakes, round four of the Semdec Irish Tarmac Rally Championship. And when we left you, Callum Devine led Rob Barrable and Rob Duggan at the top of the standings. And as the bail and taping crews were out in early preparation for day two, we managed to get a word with Motorsport Ireland President, Aidan Harper. We're on a journey in Motorsport Ireland. We're ensuring that we, as we launch our new strategic plan towards the end of the year, that motorsport is so relevant. And it needs to be relevant as we go into 24, 25 and 26. And that's what our new plan will be fostering and encouraging youth into the sport and looking at the longevity of the sport and ensuring that safety is paramount at all times. We are leading the way in, in, in safety and you, you never know, we might be very close to having and hosting a World Rally Championship here ourselves in the not too distant future. And back to the action. Once again, the big crowds on the gap honouring Craig Breen as they waited for the cars to emerge. Devine was the fastest out of the blocks on day two. On Sunday morning's opener, the leading crews encountered wet conditions in their race between Killarney and Kenmare. Four seconds separated Devine, Barrable and Duggan through the famous Moss Gap test. Devine then took a stage win at Balak Bima, and there's now 13 seconds between Devine and the rest of the field, with six stages remaining. Some staggering scenery as we go in car with the leader. Go oh, 100. Fast at two right. And a crest into care, tight three left, minus keep into fast three right going down. Duggan then saw his opportunity to take second spot and set up a rapid time through the second pass of Balik Bima, going fast despite some nine seconds, jumping ahead of Barable to lead him by 5.4 seconds. But up ahead, Devine's lead was now up to 25.7 seconds. And three right, 22 right plus. And two left plus, carry 50, two left plus, and flat right. And five left plus, 
into four right minus, straight over the crest, 33 right minus. Barable was slipping now in the wet of Mall's Gap, but he won the Gordon again test first time around. It was back ahead of Duggan, but their battle for second was on again as Duggan pit Barable on the knock rower east stage to jump back into second. Divine, though, was unbeatable up front. Three left plus 60. Five right into left over crest, 60. Right over crest, six left, 140. Four right over crest, the two left plus. Behind the top three, Josh Moffat shows a glimpse of what made him the 2022 Irish Tarmac and National Champion. On Ballock Bima, he said the third fastest time. Josh then extended his advantage over Sam to 9.7 seconds after stage 10. Sam Moffat tried to bounce back on the day's second Miles Gap stage. However, his Hyundai i20 Rally 2 slid off on the 11th stage and into retirement. The battle of the Monaghan siblings ended on a Miles Gap ditch. With Sam Moffat's demise, Enda O'Brien and John Butler were now sixth on the main field standings despite the wet conditions for their VW Polo. Seventh now, and more than happy to get to the finish ramp now, Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh in the polo. While into the top ten came James Ford and Neil Shanks, in the Citroen C3 Rally 2. Service in the Libra factory in Killarney in the battle for second were the main talking points for those who came to have a look as we caught up with the leaders. We have a good enough lead there, but yeah, look, it's uh, four new stages now, so yeah, still, uh, still all the play for, I would say. It's a battle between Rob Duggan and Robert Barable. Rob, you said two fast times there in the last loop. Yeah, very happy with it. When it dried up a bit, we seemed to have some bit of the setup, and uh, the bits we tweaked this morning seemed to have worked. So, yeah, I'm just go back out now and try to do the same in the next two. Robert Barbell would be hot in your tail. Rob, what's the plan for the next two? Unfortunately, Rob's too hot in my tail. So, but uh, yeah, no, hey, listen, we went for a bit of a harder compound in the last two stages and it didn't work. So, uh, back to the drawing board now with Rob five ahead of us. Callum seems to have just got a bit of a gap now. So, uh, it's not over yet, but it's just a slight mistake, and it could be anybody's then. Before we get back into the overall leaders, we have a chance to look back at the Modifieds or two-wheel drive contenders. And driving the wheels off the Toyota is Kevin Eves, a staggering run, pushing the 18th seed into a place well inside the top 10. However, Eves knew he was lucky to get out onto day two. I we were lucky enough. I, um, the clutch cylinder, well, it actually broke the Van Heisen and clutch cylinder bust just going into the last stage, so uh, we were lucky enough, uh, Gary here actually gave us a push up the hill with his car, we couldn't get going again, so we got through the last stage and got limped back in with no clutch, so how the boys, how the boys at RLA done well, how like I think in like 18 minutes that a, a gearbox and clutch and everything changed this morning and back out, so happy out. After 12 stages, Jason Black and Carl Egan had slipped to seventh overall and second and modified behind Eves. The gap had opened up to almost 40 seconds. If Eves could keep it going, he should ease to victory, but still a long way to go. Lap one right over crest, 60. Fast four left into caution, two right over crest. Caution, one left over bumps. And two left over the double jump. And very long two left push on around. And three left over bump. And long three right, slippy over finish maybe. Gary Kiernan and John McGrath in the Ford Escort were third and modified. They're now actually closing in on Declan Boyle in the overall standings after 12 stages. Less than a second now between the pair. Gary, you're lying third overall. You're having a great run here. 
<laughs> well, not as good as we'd have hoped, but uh, not too bad. We're just struggling for a bit for speed this morning. We had the right tyre choice for the gap, but then our tyre went off on Balak Bima. Uh, we just reset now, new tyres, and try and make a push on the boys. Sadly, this was the last time we see the escort of Chris Armstrong. He went out on special stage 11, which elevated Eddie Doherty and Tom Murphy in the Ford Escort into fourth in modified and tenth overall. The two winners were certainly able to mix it with the or fives in the kingdom. You were second fastest up the gap this morning sometime. Yeah, no, like I always really enjoy the gap, so uh, no, looking forward to getting back out there and hopefully like a bit drier. Also moving towards the top ten and now fifth in modified, John O'Dugan and Paul Lennon in their mark two. Great in-car shots with John O'Dugan and Paul Lennon calling the notes. John McCarthy and Kieran O'Donovan in the Ford Escort were next through and were sixth. Just ahead, Colin Price and Damien Doherty in the Toyota Stoddard. We're real drive. Sean Moynihan and Porrick O'Donovan in the Ford Escort RS were less than five seconds behind Price after 12 stages. Sean's dad works on the cars and is a rally preparation specialist. Sean, a family affair this weekend. You're the man to watch as well in Class 12. Yeah, we're having a great weekend. We're really enjoying it. Uh, so the car's built at home and dad's built the engine and every other part of it. So, like, Castletown Beer was fantastic for us. Like, it's all about uh, suspension set up and that, and the car was unbelievable there. So today are a bit faster stages. We're probably getting a bit hampered with power, but we're still enjoying it for sure, yeah. It's great fun. Dave Slattery and Dennis Coffey were next, and for Dave Slattery, a role reversal as his sons worked on his car. Dave, you have a new service crew this weekend. Yeah, the young are coming up, so there's a uh, start them off. As they say, teach them young. Teach them young, yeah, get them ready. Are them you enjoying the event so far? Yeah, lovely. It's, uh, stages are very tricky. Tire choice is a bit of a challenge, but sure, we're here, and that's the most important thing. Kevin, you're a long time running and you're out in this special car. Tell us about it. Yeah, this car I've had since 1993. Um, was my road car originally. Um, built it into a rally car and I've been rallying it for 25 years. Yeah, and you're loving Killarney? Love it every time, yeah. I've been coming here since 1988, I think, uh, rallying one way or the other, either in the passenger or driver's seat. Generally quite successful, thankfully. So, But uh, yeah, it's, it's a, love the place. Brilliant. It's Callum Devine who leaves, 25.7 seconds ahead of Rob Duggan, with Rob Barable down to third place ahead of Josh Moffat and Kevin Eaves. And that's it for part three. Join us very shortly for the conclusion of this year's Rally of the Lakes. Welcome back to the final part of the 2023 Rally of the Lakes, the battle for overall and class honours. But before we do all that, do you remember the fiddle player from the start ramp? Well, sadly, his entertaining drive came to an end on day two, retiring on special stage nine. Well, he wasn't the only entertainer on show as we highlight some of the best action now from Cruz further down the field. So on to the class winners and winning class nine, Connor Lappin from County Cavan in his Ford Escort.
Class 10 winners, the local crew, Tom and Marco Sullivan in the Peugeot 205. Class 11F in second place, Aaron Brown in the Honda Civic. And just ahead of Brown, Jason Farrell, along with Dara Crowley, another County Kerry crew in the Honda Civic. Class 11R winners, Kerry crew again, Kenneth Quirk and Sean Hegarty in the Sunbeam. Class 20 and in first, Frank Rafferty and Chloe Kelly from Galway and Cork respectively in their Evo 9. Class 22 winners, Patrick Price in the Subaru Impreza. In Class 24, Gareth McHale managed to take fourth in the class despite his issues on day one. Second in class 24, Dennis Moynihan in the Ford Fiesta. With Alan Ring and Adrian DC in the VW Polo taking the class victory. RC3, the winners, James Boland and John McKay in the Ford Fiesta. On to the RC4s and KCJ Coleman couldn't hang on to the lead. Unfortunately, a crash of Gordon again put his Ford Fiesta Rally 4 on the list of retirees this weekend. In third place, Dylan Eaves in the Ford Fiesta. Second, Kyle McBride and Lee McIntyre. Long way to come from County Donegal, but they finished second in the Ford Fiesta. Johan Lloyd claimed an incredible 1.5 second victory, hipping Kyle McBride on the very last days. The front wheel drive class showcased some of the incredible driving and battles all weekend. Johan, it's great to see the Welsh competitors over here. Yeah, no, it's great to be here. First time here, so uh, I think I'm sold on this Irish rallying job already. Can't wait to come back, so. On to the juniors in third place. Kyle McDade and Damien Sheridan in the Honda Civic. Second place, it was Evan McAvoy and Kieran O'Sullivan in another Civic. And having uh, over a minute to spare to win, Dara O'Donovan and Michael White in the Honda Civic. Continues for 80 and nips. Continues for 80 and nips. Into slowing press. Stay right for short three left on cut. Stay right for short three left here on cut. 60, short three left. And short three right, short three left, and short three right, 100, steady up, five right push, 100, turn square left, bail inside at the gap. Overall junior winners, you must be delighted. Absolutely, can't put it into words at the moment, I'd say it'll take a couple of days for this to sink in. Fantastic day, all different types of conditions thrown at us, car never put a foot wrong all day, fantastic. RC5, which is the next step up from juniors. Class winner, Gavin Scheel and Kevin Blanche from Carlo in the Ford Fiesta ST. On to the historics and third place, Will Onions and Dave Williams in the Ford Escort RS. Second place, Gavin Bevan and David Evans in their mark to 25.8 seconds off the overall winner, which was Duncan Williams and Guy Weaver, the defending champion in the RS 1800. Duncan, a well-deserved victory here this weekend. Thank you very much, thank you very much. It's, I, I couldn't have done it without my friend uh, Guy Weaver on the, on the notes. Uh, you know, the, the organisers have put a great rally on, fantastic stages. We just love the people here. Killarney, you know, the whole of Southern Ireland. Fantastic. The modified race turned on his head on the 14th stage as Eves, who dominated all weekend, finished the knock rower East Test freewheeling his Toyota Corolla. He still held the two-wheel drive lead and was fifth overall, but he was unable to return for the final loop and dropped out. Jason Black and Carl Egan would have inherited the modified lead, but their Toyota started saw its demise on the same test after his prop shaft broke. which meant in 11th place was Aidan Burke in a Mark II. Gareth Black, brother of Jason, finished in 10th in the Toyota Starlet. 9th, Oliver Benton and Kyle Diffin in a Mark II. Ollie, 
you're over from Birmingham, your first time here in Killarney. Has it met your expectations? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the stages are just uh, unreal. It's definitely in a bit of a league of its own. You know, I don't think I've ever done stages like that before. We'll definitely see you back here. 100%. Eighth place, Dave Slattery in a Mark II Escort. County Kerry crew along with Dennis Coffey. The County Cork pairing Sean Moynihan and Porrick O'Donovan in the Ford Escort RS were seventh. Brian Lavelle took his Ford Escort Mark II to sixth. In fifth, Connor Murphy and Sean Collins, another Kerry crew in the Ford Escort. Fourth, the spectacular John O'Dugan in his Ford Escort Mark II. In third place, John McCarthy and Kieran O'Donovan, another Kerry crew in the Ford Escort on the podium. Second, Eddie Doherty and Tommy Murphy in their Ford Escort. Gary Kiernan unexpectedly took up the modified lead and the win with two stages remaining. He held a one minute lead over Eddie Doherty. They were the top two wheel drive modified crew with John McGrath winning the inaugural Johnny Hickey Cup. Gary, overall modified winner, you must be delighted. Yeah, good weekend for us. It wasn't looking that promising there. And unfortunately Kevin and them went out, who had a good lead, but uh, we held it together and we picked up the pieces. Delighted to be the first name on the cup and Johnny done a lot of work for everyone down here and he was helpful over the years, so it's a nice touch to, to pick that up as well. So Let's move then to the overall. Rob Duggan retired when he slid into a bank on the penultimate stage. His polo slid wide and into a bank at Gorton again. He managed to complete the test, but he dropped several minutes and opted not to risk further damage, returning to service before the final stage. A return to the top five for Declan Boyle. He and Endo O'Brien enjoyed a great duel in their Volkswagen Polos. O'Brien was in fourth, finishing ahead of Boyle by 7.3 seconds to claim fourth overall. Josh Moffat relieved, along with Andy Hayes, to round up the podium positions. Not a great drive, but very important championship points. Rob Barrable had to settle for another runner-up finish, but he can take plenty of art on his return to the sport. The Citroen Rally driver is getting close to the top. He finished second by 25.1 seconds. Devine completed Killarney's final two stages without any drama to seal his second Rally of the Lakes victory with Nolo Sullivan calling the notes that now lead the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship ahead of the next round in Donegal as we headed to the victory ramp for the celebrations. Thanks to Noel too, he, he, he kept, kept me right all weekend and yeah, it was good, good, delighted. I'm stuck for words at the moment, uh, last year to win it for the first time in now, two in a row, look, it's, uh, it's great, it's, it's really great, um, it's the stuff of dreams really. So the top five, Divine wins, Barrable second ahead of Josh Moffat, Endo O'Brien and Declan Boyle rounding out the top five. As we hear from the clerk of the course, Dermot Healy. I'm pretty proud of Killarney just to remote what we did this weekend. 239 kilometres of fabulous stages and every bat here, here safe. Yeah, that's a good weekend. That's it here from the Assess Ireland 42nd International Rally of the Lakes. Congratulations to all our winners and especially to Callum Devine and Nolo Sullivan for their back-to-back -back win. From me and all the team here at On The Limit Sports, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Before we go, described as an inspirational figure, Mallow native's Sarah Purcell was a talented rally driver, making her rally debut in 2004 on the Rally of the Lakes. Despite failing health, Sarah took a Skoda Fabio or 5 to 12th overall on the Circuit of Munster last month. Following a diagnosis in August 2021, she remained determined and realised one of her ambitions to drive an R5 car. It wasn't just a box ticking exercise, she performed with zest and ultimate commitment that was part of her character. She'll be sadly missed.